chest we left. The party had started in Greenest, went to the raiders' camp, had a hell of a time getting Leeson out of there, but managed to do so, got back to Greenest, found out from Leeson that there's more in the raiders' camp, went back and went to the caves there and retrieved eggs after encountering um, Frulam and defeated her enough to send her on her way. The eggs now in your possession. Started north toward El Torel in the company of Antar. Antar Froom, a uh, a knightly figure, very tall, um, bald head and long beard, haughty and uh, loves a fight, loves a drink. Accompanies you with the intention of meeting Leoson in El, in El Torel for some meeting. There's information that Leoson has uh, about the attacks on not only Greenest, but all of the surrounding and smaller towns from a particular seeming, seemingly recurring uh, attacks of Alta Dragons. Uh, along your travels, the eggs hatched. And something happened. There was a connection between you and each of these dragons. You got a brief glimpse of that from a man along the way. Uh, went by Alessander Zarev, who described to you the very beginnings of what you are, what you have become, which is a dragon rider. A little bit about what the bond means between you and the dragon. Making your way finally to El Torel, you decide to explore a little bit to the chagrin of the guards here uh, and to many of the denizens uh, that there are dragons accompanying you in this city. Um, Anthar tries to smooth things out with Thavius Krieg, the, um, the lord here at El Torel. And smooths it out enough that Thaddeus actually invites you all and demands <laughs> a meeting to explain yourselves. And you all promise that each of your dragons will behave themselves in, within the city uh, bounds. And after doing so, you have free reign of the city under this condition. But he did stipulate that if anyone got hurt by the dragons, uh, he would send the hellhounds after them. And you. You all found your way to a place to drink, settled in, ordered some food, had an odd experience with the food between you and your dragons, where when you drank, when they drank, when you ate, when they ate, there was something that happened in you and in them, and you felt it over the bond. It's about uh, my 
clock is not up. Hang on one second. I can tell you what time it is. <laughs> um, if memory serves, it is about uh, five or six in the uh, evening now. And you all had decided to bed down at a place to sleep. Place right next door. And head over to meet with Leason, wherever that is. On our nose, you guys don't. In the morning. That is where we left. <sighs> is there anything anybody would like to do or anything that's happening before you guys take a long rest? Uh, let me take a quick eyeball. Pretty good shape, as far as I can tell, right? Yeah. Did I miss um, anything? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Uh, I went a, a little further back because it's been no, a while. No, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I'm going to presume that, you know, at some point we're going to grab a bite to eat and I'll be like, well, I'm just going to kind of wander around and explore this place. This is kind of new. I'm not used to cities on it. Eyeball it. And he's just going to kind of wander around the town before he crashes for a long rest. You know, no, no intent, just looking around. Yeah. City is gorgeous. Uh, this time of year, they have, um, it's roughly... Uh, it's, it's not quite fall yet or tailing the end of summer and you can see all manner of flower and gardening here they really pride themselves on what they can grow it's, it's very nice walking through especially with the river coming through the city too oh yeah, I mean, just just get a feel for things, you know, because things have an atmosphere and then head back and crash so that we can get on with our meeting. Okay. Um, I'm going to break verisimilitude here for a second. Uh, mm -hmm. Kev, this is driving me nuts. <laughs> Where do I find the simple calendar? How do I turn it on? Uh, Left hand side under. Or anybody. Configure settings. Uh, I think simple calendar. Uh, click on uh, you know the the filter, and then you just click on it, and it'll open up for you. Do, 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 do. If you go to your left hand side where your token controls are, go down to journal notes. Oh, there's another way. Jeez. Should be a button there. Where it is. I knew there was one over there. And it's not clicking on. I don't know why. Maybe you've hidden the, uh, the tab somewhere that you can't see it. Something else? Because mine click thumbs up okay. Hey, yeah, there it is. For me. Okay. I see it now. It was. It was hidden. It was like tucked off into the bottom right corner. Right where the that window is. Oh, gotcha. Couldn't see it. All right. So, anybody else? Anybody doing anything before? Mm. Uh, I don't think so. It's tomorrow we're meeting with. Right. Thar's taking so, yeah. I wouldn't mind uh, checking out an armory Looking for an armor upgrade. Okay. Yeah, I just uh, don't have to RP it if you don't, but we can. I'm just looking for a split mail. Um, you ask around town, there is a place, uh, a lot of 
everybody keeps pointing you in the same direction. This place called Metal and Fire. And... No, I'm sorry. That's wrong. The armor room. I need something in there, too. Yeah, I lo- lost the city map for l 2 L2, by the way. Alrighty. Ooh, there it is. There you go. They all point you the same direction. The armor is uh, you pull as you walk up to the shop. It is literally called the armorer <laughs> it's a squat place narrow but as you walk in it runs very very deep and all the way in the back is a very uh, warm glow of a forge uh, squat dwarf you ask him and they do have splint armor. Several. All along the walls, as you're walking all the way towards the back to go talk to this dwarf, there are armor just hung on the wall, lining on both sides. I'll head to the, uh, the back. Okay. No. Speak to the dwarf there. Uh, good day, sir. Looking to uh, possibly upgrade and the old chain here, possibly for some splits. Could you take a trade in and some gold? You see a uh, a shorter dwarf um, wearing. Padded uh, clothing with a heavy leather apron, and is working on a mannequin, and, like pinning stuff and like sizing it up. And has his has his back to you and turns around. Um, we we can do this. What uh, what what are you looking to trade? Well, uh... Place the helm on the table and uh, the dolphin like chainmail that I'm wearing. Kind of lay it on the table. Not a bit of use, eh? Just needs a roll in a barrel with some dirt. Spiff right up. You see him put his hand inside. And like poke a finger out of a hole in one of the chain links. <laughs> and buff right out. <laughs> oh. I've felt this many times. And you will have it repaired, a man in your skill, in five minutes and buffed up by one of your squires overnight and back for sale by tomorrow. I'm just looking for a fair uh, trade, that's all. I give her a uh, persuasion check. Am I with him? Ooh. Even with minus one. He looks at it. We. Oui. I'll give you a 50. How much for the splint? 200. Sold. Takes the armor, goes and grabs a huge ladder, and like a library, just rolls it across the wall and crawls up. One handed, this tiny squat dwarf picks up a full set of plant ma- uh, splint mail and walks down the ladder 
and holds it up to you. Quick question. Um, is Baby with you? And where is she? Uh, I don't know. Did we get to the point where we had brought them back? Uh, you had. They, yeah, they you were... had convinced Fabius that it was okay to bring the dragons in under the condition that they don't scratch a single person within this town. Yeah, baby's pretty chill. So she'll be with me. This entire interaction, the dwarf is trying to keep professional. But you see his eyes keep darting down to this dragon behind you. That on me for saying, but um, that is yours. Oh, no, not at all. She is of her own. She just chooses to come with me. Oh no. More time. There's there's a flash of a bunch of different reactions to <laughs> one of shock. <laughs> She's not with you. Shock this. Uh, and then confusion. She's on her own. <laughs> and then further confusion. She chooses to be with you. Uh, the <laughs> so it is with you then the, 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 the dragon is with you friends right. um, stare she doesn't like staring uh, I tried not to, but um, it's, uh, it's a little difficult. Um, Beautiful, isn't she? She is, actually. Now you mention it. She's very tame. I cannot get over it. How did you do this? Oh, I did nothing. Other than let her know that you seem to be a just shopkeeper. And if you overcharge us, you'd eat her. I see. Uh, make it. I just give him a wink. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, one, one last question. Um, is that the. A real dragon? Is it an actual? She she will grow to be bigger than my shop. Mm, time will tell. Perhaps, perhaps no. You see the wheels turning. Then there's a lot of armor. Keep those thoughts to yourself. Let's do a lunch. Yeah, I'm just saying if she ever needed anything. Oh, and here I thought that you were considering removing her scales for armor. What you propose is probably it's a lot be... better for her and safer for you. That's something I'll have to consider, though. The opposite direction that you would <laughs> he would use the dragon for armor. Um, you guys talk for a little bit, and. Um, he essentially offers in the future or sometime that uh, you 
Maybe come back when she's a little bigger, if you ever need armor. I will definitely keep that in mind. Oh, I do have something. Um, while I'm out wandering, I'm going to yes. look for like a hunter's guild hall, or even, and if I can't see one of those, a farmer's guild hall, or like a, a what do they call them? Uh, out here we call them granges. It's just you know, like where they all they'll meet for pricing and you know setting things up. It's kind of like guild hall. Um, I also need some stuff. Okay. On the- Oh, if you're, yeah. Do, do Eric since you're in the armor anyway. Go ahead. Uh, I mean, I'm looking for some... Uh, let me pull up my character sheet. I'm looking for... Do you have Do you have anything that... Uh, I hope I'm in the right spot. Do you have anything that maybe some flaming arrows or any exploding arrows or anything like that? Flaming? Uh, no, we don't do uh, arrows here. Um, do you know any place nearby who might have something like that? Yeah. Yeah. He kind of, he kind of looks at you. Zeros, um, hope you come back. Might have something. Um, occasionally they sell arrows. Of theirs. This is Armel, my friend. Um, and I, he seems really hesitant to say something, and he looks at you. And then sees Lefoten. Another dragon. How many are there? Does everyone have one now? Yeah. You see, you see Taz <laughs> in the shop as well. <laughs> you, I guess you don't have one, huh? No, but we're going to get one. Point one. I can showcase some of my armor. They're special. Mm-hmm. Special. There's one other place. Uh, I don't like referring to people to him. He's sketchy, how you say. Yeah, sketchy. Where, where, what's the name of the place? It's not a place. It is a, it is a person. Um, the hellhounds don't like him. If that tells you anything, his name is Yorisko. Everybody knows him as the fox. Right. Is a, he likes to hang out at the southern part of the city uh, near the bridge. Tries to catch travelers as they come in and, and hoodwinks them with uh, bullshit. Yeah, I'm familiar with that, that part of town. Appreciate the info. I guess you don't want me to tell him that you sent me. Please don't. I don't like being associated with him. I just know that he has things like what you are looking for. Thank you very much. There's a new shop on the map for you.
Uh, anyway, did I have any luck finding what I was after? Um, you don't find anything within the walls of the city. Um, as you were up Okay. There are um, a couple of people as you're asking around that point you to the outside the wall. So, uh, all right. Um, ba, 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 ba. Yeah, I'm going to go back down. Oh, wait. It's about five. I'll wait till tomorrow. I'm just going to try and figure out where the hell everybody else is and. Actually, can, can the dragons talk to each other? Or is it only between the dragon and the rider? Only between the dragon and rider, as far as you know. Okay. So yeah, I'm gonna... Me and Bloss and I are just trooping through the city and gonna head back to the room and crash while okay. they do whatever they do. Yeah, I'm heading back. All right. You all head back, bed down for the night. These rooms are pretty nice. They're, they're, um, <clears throat> turns out Onthar, uh, covered them for you. Um, not anything over the top, but nice rooms. Um, it's like a, Middle of the road hotel. <laughs> and rest takes you all. For those of you who have not hit the long rest button, you can if you need to or should choose to do so. I think we must have done that at the end of the last session. Well, I don't know that you guys got into any. Mm, no, issues. no, I just, yeah. I think it yeah. may have just been like, oh, we're about to take a long rest and click the button. Yep. Oh, you mean we didn't we didn't get in any skirmish or something? Yes, we didn't get into anything. So. As you guys. Are resting. About. I'd like everybody to make a perception check for me. Just straight. Just a straight perception. I'm going to roll for you, uh, uh, Merrick. Yep, there it is. That's persuasion. Oh, go ahead and re-roll. Oh, you got it. Uh, it was 20 it minutes was... ago. Yeah, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. Yeah, it was... You got it right. Taz and Merrick, you guys sleep through this. You all have your own rooms. Um, but Umari, you wake up and, and in your dreams you hear shouting and as you toss and turn. You, you wake up a little and realize that the shouting isn't just in your dreams. Outside, way in the distance, you you hear the the the, the faintest. You recognize this kind of shout. This isn't, you know, drunk. This is emergency. 
You, you hear several shouts like this. Do I have a window? Or is it? You do. You is do. It, I'll go over to the window and open it up and, and see if it's coming. Like, is it outside or if it's like in the in itself? Oh, it's definitely outside and it's ways away. Uh, you see firelight in this direction and in this direction. This whole section of wall is just lit up with with fire like torches moving and bonfires and braziers all right i'm gonna tap on lofa wake up wake up buddy he's he's already up okay because you were up all right i'm gonna look him in his eye and say got a mission see all that noise and all those lights you just go as high as you can and go scout it out for me don't spend too much time out there and try not to be seen. If you're seen, head straight back and let me know what's going on. Uh, you see a twinkle in his eye. He's he's excited to 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 be moving and doing something like this. Uh, he immediately right. jumps up on the sill and takes off into the darkness. Um, make a uh, make a stealth check for me. With the make yeah. Yeah, it's nighttime. He's a silver dragon. And then a perception check for um Lefoten. So use his character sheet, by the way, for these roles. Oh shit. I'm sorry. That's okay. We'll we'll get we'll take the 20. Keep moving. All right, hold on, I'm gonna get to his. And then a perception. Oof, that was so close. <laughs> it's a rock on the 20 and rock back. <laughs> um, the, the images you're getting is, is, is Lofoten flies above the city. The, the houses get smaller and smaller and smaller as it gets higher and higher. Uh, he is very, very well hidden because he is way too high. And and he sees he sees about as much as you do from your window. There's firelight and the wall. Okay. Um, I don't recall it's because it's been a while when we the communication with the dragon that's not that like how it's not like a long distance thing like when we can kind of read each other's minds I think that's like when we're, we're talking to each other or something like that right that's like a mile I think it's a mile hmm. it's so a mile you can alright buddy what do you see Um, give me one second. Doo, doo, doo. There it is. Want to share? Okay. Not much. So, uh, as he is flying in a circle above, and just sending back images. You you hear in your mind. It's all elite. All right. Too much light. Oh, and he's about as high as he can fly, right? Uh, safely, yeah. Okay. Um. All right. We're gonna do. We're gonna do. We're gonna take one shot at this. I want you to go down. Wow, just you need to strafe them, but up go down half as high as you are. We're only gonna do this one time and just fly by as fast as you can. Don't hover and see what you can pick up and then come back. Okay. Um let me look at 
the folks on this sheet here for a second. And also just uh, off here, I mean, I'm assuming it's on purpose, but I just was noticing that the dragon, as my dragon, is, doesn't have any proficiencies. Is that because is that they're still young? Or is that something that comes over time or to be determined? Correct. Okay. Yep. So, he darts down and kind of like tucks his wing in and dives down about 500 feet and then scoops out and starts swerving along this section of the wall on the outside. And immediately picks up you see flashes of a couple of things you recognize and a couple you don't you see a couple of those prey those purple praying mantis like insects with the long scythe like uh, legs there's maybe e- 10 of them along the wall and you see guards along the wall firing arrows down you see at the two towers a couple of ballista uh, throwing rocks down at them and <laughs> across the ground um, you see one one of those large uh, beetle looking rhino thing charging toward the wall before one of the bull- Ballista, the the um, not not ballista, the um, the mangonels. A rock just slams into its side and sends it sliding into the dirt. You see, maybe about fifty or so creatures you don't recognize. They're zombie esque. They're like humanoid in form, but half their face is gone, or they are, you know, missing the the a chunk of their stomach, and they are just like running towards the wall. And in the firelight, you just see a distinct purple color coming from them. The liquid that oozes out of them is purple. And these are the most prolific. Okay. Uh, you need to come home, buddy. We're outnumbered. We gotta, we gotta talk to the team. And he just <laughs> darts his way back uh, and lands in the window. You, you do see a look of like concern on his face and feel it through the bond alright I'll go up and pat him on his head and give him a little piece of a little snack he's um, a good job let's go talk to the boys and then um, I'll go wake up Taz and Merrick Uh, American and Taz, you hear slamming on your doors and Umari's voice. I hop right up, of course. And what the hell? Scott? Mm. Assuming something's wrong. Yeah, the city's under attack. Again? Uh, by what? Yeah. Same creatures, the beetle looking thing, the praying mantis looking thing, but some new, a horde of undead or something they're bleeding purple glowing purple so there's a lot of them Uh, the order not have things under control by the looks of it uh look pretty chaotic to me i don't know i don't know how long it's been going on i'm assuming i woke up right at the beginning looks like they're they're making some damage to the enemy but uh a lot 
probably use a bow, so I get dressed, grab my bow. And the armor. Yep. Okay. Are they coming from any specific direction across the bridge, out one of the gates? Yeah, just just across the bridge. There's no gate here. Just They're wall. just Mari. You just saw them slamming up against the stone wall. There's no no rhyme or reason, no tactical reason to to attack this particular part of the city. And you didn't see anything else as you scan the perimeter. It's just here. Where is it on the map? Right here. Oh, sorry, I'm not on the map. My map is paused. Your map is what? Paused. Paused. Yeah. Yep. It's it's not paused now. Hmm? I lack permission. Hmm. Something that I will. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so there you I go. See the party. Yep. And where where is this wall? Which wall is it? <laughs> this one. Over on the edge of the map. Oh, oh, oh. I zoomed way too in. Okay. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This way. I think we're, we're somewhere over here anyway, yeah. so. I guess we've got to head over there, huh? Yeah. You um, all don your armor and... Uh, bleary-eyed, kind of rubbing as you're as you're running, and dragons in tow, make your way down the street, down the city, and towards this bridge, this this stone uh, handcrafted bridge that goes across this uh, lazy flowing river underneath you, towards the wall of the city. And you see several uh, several guards, um, you know, maybe seventy-five to a hundred of them just flooding this particular area of the city. And you see several more up on the walls. And you also see uh, a palanquin. You see a hovered tent type thing as you approach the wall. And as you rush up and look inside, you see Thavius Krieg standing with legs apart arms crossed looking at the wall and occasionally the captain will come up and bark something at him and he'll send them off this is you're not seeing anything coming over the wall right 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 um but it is like you know emergency status Merrick and Velocinar will run basically right up and kind of around to the front of them. Like, what do you need? I'm going to look at Velocinar for it and I'm like, I'm sure he can do something. And I got a bow. He shakes his head and kind of looks at you and then looks down. Uh, that's right. But if you want to do something, then go do it. I turn around and I look for the nearest steps going up to the wall. To get up on the, uh, the, 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 whatever you call them. I can't think of it. But yeah, battlements. And as you as you crawl up on the wall and you get up there, uh, Valisnar goes up. And what do you have Valisnar do? Um, Valisnar is going to go up and stay with Merrick until we, you know we're, we're, we're deciding what we're going to do together here so okay we stay so as you get up to the wall there is a rush and flood of these undead looking zombie like creatures but they're not zombies that you can tell they're they're like from the stories that you've heard about zombies, this is it. Yeah, they they have remnants of of I don't know. They're not purple for starters, and th there's just something odd about them. And I, I, the fact that they're with these insect-like creature things, red flags all over the place. 
Merrick pulls his bow and an arrow, and I assume there's a mass of them at some point. Yeah. You could fire any arrow into this mass and hit and hit any number of them that you wanted. He does so and lets go with a light cantrip on the arrow as he fires it because he wants to see, right? You know, even yep. with dark vision, I want to see in color and let everybody else see. And I'm looking, are these the people from Greenest? Can I tell? Do I recognize make a uh, make a perception check? All right. Looking down into this, the arrow fires in and hits one kind of in the neck and collarbone, and the light shines out. And as it as it goes down, it is immediately swallowed by others and bodies just crawling and climbing at the wall at the base of it. And the light is quickly just smothered. It is hard to tell. You caught a quick glimpse. There wasn't anybody there. Taz, Sumari, what are you doing? I assume something similar is hearing Thavius. Yeah, we'll follow him up, and with that, I'm going to bless uh, three of us. Okay. Some of the soldiers um, see this and, like, visibly relieved that there's somebody here. They recognize what it is and um, are happy to have you here. What is what is baby doing? That's okay. What is baby doing? Go. And fly up, but not too far. Okay. More so out breaks. Out this way. Out this way. Just out and around both both ends of the wall, going up and around. Okay. Baby takes off and is occasionally just sending flashes and images to you of a standing wall with nothing there. Um, Occasional guards that look worried. You just see a flash of this image in your mind every once in a while. No bugs. No humanoid creature things going up that way. Baby doubles back, goes down south. There's nothing that way. As Baby goes out west, there are some stragglers coming in. Looks like this is the end of whatever this is. I'll announce that to the people around me. Hello to Fabius, sir. And he looks up and nods. He's just looking at a wall right now and relying on communication from the guards and those up on the wall. So he nods in appreciation. Umari, what are you doing? And what is uh, what is Lefoten doing? Lefoten, I'm going to send Lefoten up um, with Baby, but I'm going to instruct him to go the opposite direction so they're they're covering more ground. Um, gotcha. So on the map. Yeah. And yep. then I'm going to go up and I'm going to just... I guess pick a pick a target and and lay down a mind sliver on them. You guys collectively between um, um, Baby Valisnar, Umari, Taz, all of you go up to the top of the wall and just start pummeling these things at the base of the wall. The strangest thing is that at the base of the wall, it doesn't look like it's being damaged. And they're not at all bothered by the losses. They're just driving into the stone wall with a single purpose and not making any effect. Um, And slowly but surely dies away. And there's no more movement. Merrick and Blossom are look at each other 
and just yeah i don't like it either um can you and with that uh Velocinar, you know heading out to just fly the entire length of the wall and come back just because it's it's like a fate to me Wilsonar doesn't see, see anything. The, the rest of the city is clear. So this thing just disappeared? No, they didn't disappear. They're all dead at the base. Just as a little tiny, comparatively. It's, it, does this, I mean, is this the same size as what hit Greenest? Just not, you know, just it's hard to tell. Beat- you weren't I mean, there for it. Uh, I mean, well, for that one little incursion, I mean, this mm-hmm. is like, you know, two, three times that size. Yeah, but, but I mean, because it's of not, the stone wall. Yeah, yeah. It's still not nearly enough for this target. Um, yeah, I'm going to go. What was the guy's name? The general or captain, whoever was. What was his name again? Avius. Yeah, I'm going to walk up to him. Have you, have you seen these? creatures before? Is this new to you? It looks reluctant, but yeah, I've seen him. More and more. More than I'd like. Each time they Increase in numbers. Where they're coming from, or why they're why they're here? I've sent scouts who have come back. Each time they hit a different part. You think you could suss them out? Well, if you do, let me know. And I'll tell you this, I promise you this, that El Terrell will be a place you can call home. You protect my people, I will protect you. Whatever this is, I don't like it, and I want it to stop. Sounds like a good deal. I'm going to bed. (laughs) Turns to a captain. Clean this mess up. Whatever it is, get it away from my walls. Rest here. Spread them up. Don't bunch up. Keep your eyes peeled. And he marches off to wherever he sleeps. Man has the right idea, and Eric's going to do the same. Right. Okay. Mentions like the rest a- of the night goes by without issue. You all wake in the morning, and um, it is a beautiful day. Um, Anthar greets you all down at the base of the uh, the first floor of a place to drink. Cheery, big smile on his round face. Holding uh, a tanker. <laughs> Even Merrick's not drinking this early, but I'll go down and join him. Before we uh, dive in, uh, let's take a five-minute bio break. Sounds good. Sound good. All right, cool. I have a bunch of bugs splattered. I will go wall. talk to that person. I will go talk to them. If they've got bed bugs, I swear they're going to pay. <laughs> That's not cool. No, no, no. Outside the wall. Big giant bugs. And other things. I pull out that jar with the, the beetle in it. And I'm like, these things, you ever seen these? 
the hell is that? They hit greenest a couple days ago. They just hit the wall here. They seem to be everywhere. Oh, that's right. That's right. Those there's more of those up here. I guess. Uh, after well, our little is... meeting, I think we got to figure out what we're going to do here because this, this is a problem too. This is uh, concerning. We'll say that. Um, but another problem for another time, I suppose. Uh, your boys ready to head over to Leeson? Is there anything you'd like to do before we do so? Ready to go? Let's roll. All right. We guys all. He downs the last of his tankard, slams it on the table, and heads out. Leads you guys through the city, um, walking your way towards the uh, s- south west corner of the city. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And meandering through the different homes, some are, you know, the, some of these buildings are stacked on top of each other, essentially, right? And like, there's a house on top of a house, and there's just one big rectangle. And then some of them are ramshackle, and it's a very the the whole place has the feel of multiculture just converging into a place. And sometimes people stop and just make a make a home. Is it different from the other part of town that we were that we were in earlier? No. No, this this whole town as you as you've really kind of walked around this whole place now you, that sense you got from the tavern of all different people, of all different walks of life, nobility rubbing shoulders with peasants. This whole town has that feel, this whole city. As you're uh, walking through this place, you do notice a large uh, circular building, um, essentially a coliseum with large, um, massive, massive wooden oak doors that lead into it, and you walk past it. And meander through the alleyways into a tiny little space, and Anthar comes up to a building and raps on a door, and then raps again, and then kicks it once with his foot. And after a couple of minutes, the door peeks open and you see Leoson's face. Oh. Well, get your asses in here. Come on, let's go. And he stands aside and lets you all in. Come on, come on, hurry, hurry, hurry. <laughs> and shuts the door big huge not just a like a bolt like there's a steel bar that he shunks <laughs> into place and takes you all down to a basement the the first floor that you guys go to uh, as you enter in is not lit. The windows are boarded up and shut and everything in here is covered in dust and cobwebs. It leads you to the back corner where there are stairs going down. And I will pull you all. As you descend the stairs, you're in a series of chairs arranged in a circle with a large desk in the back wall. Leeson goes over and finds a chair next to the desk and turns it around and sits with his arms up on the back. 
and then waits for you all to take a seat. All right. Uh, I see. I'm just going to sit right where I'm at, I guess. I can't move my token anyway, so. It's weird. Leosin looks to Anta. Do you have any trouble getting here? Not really. Um, these folks seem well enough capable. He looks across the desk to a man sitting with long flowing robes, a shaved bald head, uh, ornate necklace, perfect posture, arms in his sleeves, and just casually looking at all of you, including the dragons, nonplussed at the dragons. Leoson, as the dragons entered in, he gave them like a like an eyebrow watching them follow you kind of a look but didn't say anything as you all get down here he looks to the three of you so we're gonna start with uh what the hell is that why are they here i told you to go get dragon a we have dragons what got That's lost? Right. They hatched. Didn't see that. Well, it's not our fault. Didn't say what. what why are Why are they here? Uh, why? And he turns to the dragons. Well, why are you here? lost in our answer we chose to be as best what? he can in common the uh, is going to walk up to me to Imari and put his wing around him and say we are one <laughs> oh no <laughs> oh wait okay you who have anything to add to this? Good to go. I saw it come up. Your connection is unstable. Ah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so I paused. On third pipes up. I was uh, just as confused as you, um, but apparently, Alessandra kind of knew, and uh, they uh, bonded somehow. Leosin looks at the three, looks at you, Taz. You found him. Or he found you, I guess. Yep. Stumbled upon him. Somehow I got a feeling no matter what path we would have taken, we would have run into him. Yeah, he's kind of he's kind of weird like that. I reach out um, my bag and pull out one of my cigars and I'm not going to light it. I'm just going to stick the few on the end. Hmm. Um, just a quick question. Has uh, Merrick ever seen anyone looking like this guy at all? I mean, is this completely alien or? Yeah, the, the eyes are very foreign. Um, 
You've seen a couple people that look like this. Okay. Not necessarily the bald head, but the facial features. You, 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 um, it's not common. But it's it's around. Okay. And nothing culturally. Um, culturally, you know that the people who look like this generally come from far east of here. Right. And so either he is uh, directly from there or descendant from. Merrick <laughs> just thinks east. That's that, that's <laughs> specifically east and south of of, of uh, right, right. A long uh, way off, but in a in a direction that he's thinking of, yeah. which happens to be east anyway. Um, yeah. So there's the continent of Faerun. This is east of Faerun. Okay. Okay. This is like okay. Yeah. This is this, this is like far another continent. away. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, I got you. I got you. I got you. Um, very far away. Very exotic and heard of. Not run into very often. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, I'm like, well, I, I think I know everybody else's name. What? He looks at this guy. Who are you? man very slowly and intentionally looks at you with intensity and purpose I am Xiaomi I am the high hopper Nielsen has told me much about all of you. I'm here to learn and listen. And he looks at each of you in turn, Taz, Umari, Merrick, the Foten, Balasnar, and Baby. It is an honor to meet you, Durugor Skund. And he sits back. Listen. Well, uh, I, I guess, um, thank you for coming. Uh, and bring in guests. Um, so, the reason for the secrecy is pretty straightforward. You guys know that I've been tracking the cult of dragons for a while. Recently, most recently, they hit greenest, took everything they had, and there's a big, like they had to take that somewhere, tracked it back to the Raiders camp. Where did it go from there? You guys brought back a map. Alder's Gate was circled on it. I think that's where it's going. From there, I don't know. The fact that you, you three, were able to get into the Raiders camp, grab my sorry ass, and get out, speaks a lot to what you can do. If you haven't guessed already, I'm part of the Harpers. Huntar's not. I am. The Harpers are looking at the three of you for recognition and not really seeing a lot except for a little twinge of recognition from you, Merrick. The Harpers are an organization. We keep ourselves underground. 
We trade in secrets and information. Is there a big war coming? We're the first to know. Is someone moving to take down a government? We'll be the first to know. We think we're the first to know that this cult is bigger than anybody is supposing. We have to figure out where this gold is going. Because it's not just greenest gold, it's multiple towns. They're putting it somewhere. They're bringing it somewhere. That's the piece we don't know yet. like you guys to track it down if you're willing. <clears throat> oh. Sounds like fun. <laughs> Well, let me see something. What does that mean? Lakotan's gonna chime in and say, I'm in. I only have one concern. I pull out that jar with that beetle in it, and I walk up and I set it right there on the desk. What about these things? And he just kind of looks at him, you know. Uh, I, 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 I know it's not dragons, but yeah. This and looks at it. Anthar. Leeson says, yeah, those are a problem too, but I think they're a separate problem. I'm not sure if the cult is working with them or not. And he looks to Shao and you just see the subtlest of, of nods. Leas and turns back to the rest of you. It seems like these things are cropping up from the south and moving north. The northern cities haven't even heard of them or seen them or anything like that. That thing in the jar, no one up north has ever even seen one of them. You go down south. You go to Am, they're all over the place. And worse. So, it's a threat, but we know about it already. It's a threat, and we know about it. We don't know how much of a threat, and we don't know... We do... We did kind of connect that these things can cause some kind of a sickness. That's... Uh, deadly uh, a cut contact prolonged contact these things can do some damage I, even if they don't kill you okay so and do not take this in any offense um, I, I, I need to find somebody else for more information and I think I know who to talk to um, I've already sent some letters I'll send him this. We'll find out. And, uh, Listen, if you find out anything, yes. if you find out anything and you tell me, I'm connected. Yeah. I, I can have you. this information spread far and wide among the Harpers while keeping it discreet. 
The last uh, thing we want is this bad information getting into the bad hands. Uh, For now, the cult is a primary target. Wherever this caravan of gold is going, if we can track it down and find out where its destination is, Hopefully we can find the hive and follow the bees. I'm always down to track something. <clears throat> Sorry, this is all sounding pretty noble and happy, but more of a earth man. <laughs> Thinking about uh, reimbursement and per diems and Thing. Leeson kind of <laughs> shakes his head and glances over at his shell. It's kind of cigar. Shell <laughs> just you see the faintest, the faintest of smiles. And a little nod from him to Leosin. Leosin. This armor's not cheap. I do. Yeah, I know. Pretty sure I paid for it. In a roundabout way, possibly. All right. Fair enough. I'm asking a lot, and I get that. Track this thing down to Boulder's Gate. You hop onto the caravan. We've got a guy there already set up. He'll get you in. His guard duty. We're going to send you down the river from El Torel. You should beat this, this wagon to Baldur's Gate and meet it there. They're dragging a lot of shit with them and they can't move fast. But they're already a few days ahead of us. We get to Baldur's Gate before they do. You hop on the caravan with them as guards. And follow it. We'll meet up with you again in Waterdeep. We meet up in Waterdeep. There'll be 5,000 gold waiting for you. And if I can scrounge up any other bits of equipment, I'll toss that in. We need dragon food. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Yeah. All right. I can, I can get you... He looks to Shao. I don't, I don't know. In 10 days of rations for dragons? I don't know how fast they grow. Neither do we. <laughs> That'll do. Oh. Yeah, and uh, when we get to the gate, you know, our friends are not quite so, um, you know, easy to blend in. So if you know of a, a stable of a friend that they could kind of hide out in if need be. It just might make it that much faster for us getting in there. I don't know how I can help there. Sorry, Velocinar, you might be sleeping in the field. <laughs> um, I can talk to our contact. He might know somebody, but I don't know. No promises. And uh, 
We do need fresh horses because we're going to ride fast. Uh, you're going by boat. Oh. Pleasure cruise. I can do it. <laughs> this we contact us- in Alder's Gate. His name is Jormund. He's uh, dark skinned. Um, got a turban type thing going on. Uh, merchant. When you get there, tell him the crow sent you. know who you are. Have we, I'm sorry, have we heard that term yet, that name? Or is that new to us? It's new. I think it's new, yeah. yeah just confirm that, that 5,000 gold, that's each, right? Try and keep a straight face. <laughs> I can do as much as three each. Look, the red right has. I think that sounds. I think that sounds fair. Uh, that throwing that kind of money around makes me think that these guys kind of doubt we'll even see water deep. Hmm. I got nothing better to do. What you, baby? You want to go see a real city? You you get a sense of uh, curiosity and a little bit of excitement. You also do get a. It's 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 strange. It's it's like behind that, buried. You pick up a little bit of reservation and hesitation. And get a couple flashes of people that have reacted badly to baby. You all get this from your dragons, each of you, the the excitement of seeing a huge city. At the same time, with with Velocinar, is it more that or more suspicion than fear? Not fear. It's it's hesitation. Just reserva- hesitation. It's All it's right. it's reservation. It's oh like, yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, it's dragon going to the middle of a city <laughs> it's just a, an, it's an issue it's, yeah yeah the the primary things you're getting are, are excitement and and wherever you guys go we'll go and and we're happy to do it okay all right yeah merrick's just kind of laughing he's thinking this is more gold than he can ever like really conceive of for you know <laughs> <laughs> Everything's always been hand to hand for him in his life, so it was just ridiculous to him. <laughs> well, to that end, and Chow pulls out a small chest from the desk and his large thunk, and he just slides it across the desk. Who, who passed 500 it? 500 e- Okay. And what was there that? Is, there is 500 gold each to get you started. Um, Umer is going to walk up and grab his 500 and then reach out to shake his hand. He looks at it and very slowly takes it 
and like awkwardly shakes your hand. Okay. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna look like that was weird, but that's what it's. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 very awkward. You can tell he's kind of not oblivious used to people being Mary's so yeah. Forward. <laughs> I was gonna say Mary's putting it in a pouch, and he's got a look on his face like, "How expensive is this place we're going to?" Yeah, you know, it's like he figures this has all got to be just expenses. So, and he's kind of like, and just go okay. Make some for a tombstone, Merrick. Now, when does this boat leave? As soon as you are ready. Are our horses coming? Big enough? Fortunately, the boat is not big enough for the horses. You do see Anthar's like shifts uncomfortably. Um, Leah said, "Can you make sure that these horses get back to Greenest? They can't really. I mean, they gave them to us. They can't really afford to part with them." Leah said, "I'll take care of that. No Thank worries. You. Yeah, I'll check on them when I get there. Anyway." It's been a few days, and last I heard, they, uh, they're still not doing great. Don't like it. All right. You guys have any, any questions for me? <laughs> Anything you, you want to know, you want to ask? I mean, is there a specific, and I'm sorry if I missed this, is there a specific, like, do we know specifically where we're going in this in the city? Yeah, right, right now, now yeah. Or, well, yeah, from here we can go to the boat. I have one stop to make, but yeah. Then when we get there, do we know, or do we know exactly where we're going? If there's a contact that we're going to meet that will direct us, apparently. Jorman will get you there. Uh, Baldur's Gate is... Uh, one of the major cities in the Sword Coast, uh, if you haven't been, and you've all heard of it. Yeah. Um, it's it's like here, you know, it's like hearing City. about New York City. Yeah. You may have never been, but you've heard of it. And uh, he's... Norman will get you where you need to go. He knows where the caravan is expected to come. All caravans that come into Baldur's Gate go through from the south, come in from the southern gate. Because the city is so cramped, a lot of caravans can't just pass through the city. They have to offload. They have to move the goods through the city and put them on new caravans on the other side. During this process, they hire the people that they need for guards on the other end. Well, okay then. So this is a process for them to get through the city too. So, yeah. Is, we, that plays in our favor. We should still get there as fast as we can thoughts exactly because if we don't beat them there it gets a lot harder it's a lot harder to find them and for you to follow it now for you three pointing to the dragons I don't know how you're gonna swing getting onto that caravan but I leave it to the six of you to figure it out I'm sure you can, but having three dragons coming along might raise some eyebrows. 
Yeah, Once you're outside of Baldur's Gate, even having them join the caravan could be tricky. Guess we'll find out when we get there, huh? Go with Taz. Think we could find a way to disguise a dragon as a different kind of dragon? We'll figure it out. To think on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chow stands up, the arms in his sleeves, and gives you all a very deep bow. And he goes to the front of the three dragons with purpose and slides down to his knees and gives a bow to the floor. Like his forehead touches the floor. And sits up. Is in honor. Again. Thank you. He stands up. Fluid. In his movement and walks up, up the stairs and out. Wow. Well, what I see as I roll, uh, Gold coin along my knuckles. <laughs> Shall we? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He looks at everybody and he's like, well, see you in the running. Nothing Where's keeps us here. And, uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run to the uh, deliver the Fey Run courier service. And I'm going to send that jar off to um, the guy, to the the you know the guy from my town with a letter. Yes. So, yep. So. Okay. I'll word that all later. Mm. Uh, just as a, just to remind you all, we have the uh, gentleman from the courier company that offered to. Teleport us once to every, anywhere we wanted to go, but somehow I doubt it's worth wasting yet. That be coming more handy later down the road. Yeah, we already did him his favor, right? Yeah. Okay. Glad you remembered that. I remembered the guy. I didn't remember about the favor if we had finished it. <laughs> uh, you have not. Oh, he asked you to go to a dragon graveyard. Oh. Oh. That's a. Uh, a little ways outside the city of Elterbell to retrieve the FCS stone that all carriers carry. He left his there. There. He is waiting at the tavern for you, so that I mean if you guys wanted to run there, let him know you're headed off. That's totally fine. Uh, you have the stone to contact him. Okay, I mean, it's... The sending uh, stone. Recall, are we stopping or no? I mean, are we, uh... So we're not going to go look for it, I take it? Is that the impression I'm getting? It's up to you guys. I never know when that might come in handy. I don't know how long it would take to find this stupid stone or take a couple hours or a day. How much time do we have? 
And the boat's ready to go whenever we are. Whenever you are. This is true. Let's still get it. If it does take us longer than we think is good, you can always use the favor to go right to Baldur's Gate. I mean, very good. <laughs> it kind of waste to do it that way, but yeah. Uh, if it isn't quick, let's just get the hell out. We can go look anyway. How far was this place supposed to be, do we recall? Um, I mean, he had this... pointed to it on the map. If we all go to... Here. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the um, lobby. Yeah, if you... He had pointed... Here. Oh, that's like a couple hours. That's that's more. That's like that's like four hours to get there. Yeah, let me. Mm. Let's see. I can tell you. Eight hours because a lot of it is difficult to rain. Eight. Yeah, that's 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 mm -hmm. like a that's a day at least added. Yep. Yep. I mean it's it's what? not far. It's a day's walk. What are right? our horses? If you went on horses. Half the time. It's still eight. Yeah, but that's one day. If if the yeah, boats yeah, are that's, we are. I mean, I feel like priority wise, it's like we, we you know, this is big. We can come back if we can yeah, we'll stop by and tell them if we can help them, when we come back we will. There's just nothing we can do. There's just things are too big. That that's what I'm thinking at this point. Wish him luck if he can find somebody to help him in the meantime, you know. Um, yeah, we'll tell him we'll come back to him when we're level six. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> come back later and do this quest. It'll be easy peasy. Well, there, might be bigger, what... there might be bigger monsters waiting for us <laughs> at that point in time. <laughs> he looks confused. What? What does level six mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I hate to, but yeah, it just it, it feels like that would be a bad, you know, you can do a lot in, you know, eight to 12 hours, you know, when you got a deadline. Well, that's what I'm, is there a deadline? Like if the boat is waiting for us whenever we well, get there, do we really have they a said it, it, They said it would be close if we left now. You know, it's important to beat them. So if we leave now, we'll probably be okay. Um, 12 hours is a, a, a lifetime, <laughs> so, you know. Okay. Uh. So to the boat? Yeah, yeah, yeah we're going to, you know, clear it up and, you know. Sending the horses with yeah, Leosin so the Leosin so we can get on this okay. boat. Um, quick bio break while we're traveling to the boat. Sure. Sounds good. Let's do uh, let's do five minutes. Yeah. Five minute bio break. All right. You guys emerge from this dank basement, this secretive place building. And meander back out into town to the bustling of people here. It is about 10 o'clock uh, by this time in the morning. 
the sun is shining and you hear the distant gulls on the docks. Bonthar makes his way with you along with Leah's son. You all meet with the dock master. Anthar steps forward and uh, leads in beside him. They have a quick conversation with him as you guys are looking out over the docks and see various different boats, uh, fishing boats, uh, schooners, and uh, really long boats. Uh, you even see one like full-size galleon like this thing is massive um only surmise that it came from the sword coast all the way to here to el Terrell, down the river down the kyantha river as they finish their conversation with the dock master Arthur comes back and says well, all right so we chartered a boat it's uh he kind of looks out and said, that one there. Captain's name is Erebane. Uh, they'll get you to, to Baldur's Gate. Um, safe enough, anyway. And uh, good luck to you all. I, I truly wish you the best, and I hope to see you alive again someday in the future. And he goes to shake each of your hands and gives a like a like a firm handshake and a nod he kneels down to the three dragons it was uh nice to meet you I suppose um not really sure what I'm supposed to do here? Am I supposed to shake a hand, or I, I don't, I don't know. So, good luck. And <laughs> kind of backs off. Leah and turns to the three of you. I don't know where this is going to lead, but. In my line of work, I always hope that it leads to nothing. Um, I don't know. If uh, any of you... Ah. Later conversation. Luck. And they both kind of back off as you six of you turn around to the boat. A man in a uh, long braided black hair, tri corner hat, black trench coat, walks down the gangplank and looks at the three of you. You my, uh, you, you my passengers? You're muted. If you have us. He looks so. at the dragons. God, I, I was, I was told, told about them. Uh, listen, listen here. And he kind of like waves a finger at the three of them and gets down on one knee and, and points at them. Don't, don't, don't scratch my decks. I'll, I'll, I keep a clean ship. Don't, don't, don't light anything on, on fire. It's wood. And, and, and don't, don't, don't cause trouble. Do nothing. Wanna just, just, just sit and, and do nothing if you, if you, if you can. And, uh, the, the three of you, I, I got a, I got a couple rules. One, uh, uh, no, no smart asses, and and then two, um, it's my boat, and when you're on it, it's my rules. So, if I tell you to do nothing, just do nothing. 
But if I tell you to go do something, go do something, get on. And he turns around and <laughs> walks under the boat. <laughs> and for Captain, we would do our best to be well behaved. Oh, I gotta find. I got. I gotta find a way to enforce rule one. And <laughs> and you all hop on when you see the side of the ship. You see in big wooden letters the name of the boat, the Long John. And that's where we'll end tonight's episode.